This is the Dreamer's Financial Playbook, where massive dreams are par for the course and money is our tool for building them. Where faith, family, and finances matter and always in that order. Where you can finally know that at least you have this money thing right. If you're ready to conquer money, build your business, and live a great life while doing it, this podcast is your new best friend. Welcome to the Dreamer's Financial Playbook. Hello, hello, Dreamers, and welcome to episode 85 of the Dreamers Financial Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Tiana B. Clewis, a financial lifestyle coach and startup strategist with my labor of love, c Financial Coaching. And well, the first thing I have to say is this. Welcome to 2020. I am really excited. We are now in a new year, a new month, a new decade. And this for me is just a really exciting time because I'm walking into 2020 with just like a whole new kind of spirit. Now, if you're watching me on YouTube, you see my hair needs to be washed. It's a little bit greasy. And that's because I have been so focused on like... I don't know. I've just been focused. Like your girl has been focused. Like I haven't even had time to worry about like, child, you need to do something about your hair. Okay. Y'all just going to get this greasy hair because the way that my spirit is set up right now, your girl is ready to make some things happen. Okay. First of all, it's January 1st. Most people are taking the day off. I'm not the one. Okay. Most people, whatever it is that they're dropping January 1, they recorded a couple of days before. I'm recording this on January 1 because I have been giving this particular podcast episode. Um, and for those of you who are in the Dreamers Financial Sanctuary who are watching this uh raw without any of the podcast editing, messing with whatever, um, for all of you. You, I have been taking a lot of time to really think about the message that I wanted to share with you guys to start this year off. And when you get to the end of a year, everyone wants to talk about um, how do you set goals and things like that. And, you know, I don't know, just something about it wasn't sitting on my spirit. Y'all know I ultimately ended up doing a goal setting podcast episode, uh, episode 84. And y'all know I titled it like the episode I almost get because I almost didn't do it. It just... Like, I didn't want to be like everybody else. But at the same time, like this year, I was like, how do we start this off? How do we start off 2020? And I didn't figure out what I really needed to say. It didn't really come to me what I needed to share with you guys until after last night. So y'all know I'm a Jesus girl, okay? I'm a Christian girl. I'm actually an executive pastor. And so for me, it is really important that I bring in the new year at church. So we're having um, a Trinity Harvest Church. We had our New Year's Eve celebration last night and our pastor, Pastor Ray Taylor, came out with some fire, okay, on the night. Like, you know, some places it's all music, but no, he had a whole word whole word, like a whole new sermon. And what he talked about was going beyond the limits. And it like hit me just like, it just got me like deep in the heart, just all up in my spirit. Like, yeah, it was, they say that the, they say that the, the scripture is, is a, um, a two edged sword and that sword just got me all up in here. And it was because I realized that so much of what we do, myself included, like It hit me because it wasn't just about you guys. It was about me. So much of what we do is all about um, what do we think is reasonable? What do you think we can reasonably accomplish? And in some ways that makes sense. You know, when you're sitting here trying to pay off debt and you're setting a goal to pay off debt, you got to look at what you can reasonably accomplish. But the area where we make, make the mistake is that when we start thinking about the things that we can build, When you are building something, we have to stop putting a bunch of insane limitations on what we can build. If you are, say, for example, constructing a building, then there are certain limitations that you have to, um, you have to consider. But the thing is, what we don't realize is that in considering those limitations, we need to spend more time figuring out how we can work around those limitations instead of trying to just always accommodate those limitations. Um, matter of fact, one of the things that he said in his sermon last night is he says that sometimes what we try to do is we try to take the vision that God has given us and reduce it to a place that we're comfortable to. And I'm like, bro, like I'm just sitting there like, okay, first of all, I'm surprised I didn't lose my voice. Okay, because your girl was shouting the whole time. It, because I'm just like, Bro, like that's so real. 
So many times we are trying to take what it is that we should be able to accomplish that we want to be able to accomplish and we reduce it to a realm that's comfortable for us. Now, here's the thing though. We typically don't do that for New Year's resolutions. Usually when it comes to New Year's resolutions, we think big. And then as the New Year's resolutions start to come and, you know, people typically fall off within the first couple of weeks of the New Year's resolutions, we stop dreaming big, we stop thinking big, and we find ourselves reducing now these things to what we feel is comfortable, what we feel is, what we are comfortable with doing, what, um we feel is reasonable or whatever. But one of the things that he got really like, like a phrase that he said that I clued in on was that God is not interested in part participating in our limitations. And yes, I'm reading that quote because I had to make sure I said it right. God is not interested in participating in our limitations. We serve a big God. God is a big God. He's a massive God. He's a God who created, like he created Microsoft. Okay. Yeah. Bill Gates is the dude and Steve Wozniak, they the dudes, but God is the one who gave them the vision and the direction and the moves to be able to do the things that created Microsoft. And I think Steve Wozniak was actually Apple now that I think about it, but whatever, Microsoft, Apple, um, what is it? What is the, the, the business that Warren Buffett runs right now that I can't think of? But anything that is on this earth that is beautiful and that is massive, ultimately God is the one who created it and he chose those individuals to make those things manifest. Do you understand what I am saying? The truth of the matter is we don't have to limit ourselves to what is comfortable, what we feel like is reasonable, like you can go big, you can think big, you can dream big, you can ask big. In fact, let me go on back to my little sermon notes. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna recap the whole sermon, but you gotta get this because it's gonna make what I'm about to say make sense. Because one of the things that he talks about he goes to a very classic verse uh, in Ephesians chapter three, where it says, um, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So literally whatever it is you can think of that God can do, whatever it is you can think of to ask God, he can do bigger. He can do more. Okay. We have, and so our pastor literally said, think bigger, think bigger bigger. And so whatever your new year's resolution is, do not let your new year's resolutions, your big goals, your big dreams, do not let them fall by the wayside. Don't give up on them. Like we are so prone to do. If we don't hit it that first week, that first month, that first quarter, we just give up and we reduce it. No, you got to keep moving and you've got to keep pushing. And so I ended up, um, thinking about self-imposed limitations. Now I'm not going to go through all of them. Of course, there's so many, but what I did was I kind of like identified four of them that pop up majorly in conversations I'm having with clients and even inside of myself. So you, you know me, I like to be transparent. I'm, uh, if I got to put my business out there to help you do what needs to be done, then I'm gonna put my business out there. Okay. So, um, we have to stop trying to get God to participate in our limitations when we're building these businesses, when we are building wealth for our families, building generational wealth. We have to stop trying to get God to participate in our limitations, but instead we have to shift our minds, which is the other thing he was telling us to do. We got to make that mind change, that mind shift um, to be able to get to a place where we're doing and we're thinking and we're asking bigger and we're pushing for bigger and we're striving for bigger and we're not letting um, our comfort zone and our comfort level dictate how much we're really willing to push and to try and to do. Okay. So the first self-imposed limitation that popped in my head when I'm thinking about this, um, is I'm not good at, or I'm not good with, I have to catch myself. This one I'm guilty of. Now, what the example I really wrote down is I'm not good with money. And that's because I hear that all the time from people that I work with. I'm not, girl, I'm not good with money. So I don't even know, like I need you in my life. I hear that all the time. And yes, you need me in your life because you need me to help you figure out how to find your way to be good with money. Everybody's method of being good with money is not going to look exactly the same. 
y'all have heard me talk about, you know, I give you guys some tools, some tricks, some guidelines, but then you got to finesse it and finagle it to figure out how it fits best in your family with your unique set of situations and circumstances. Like I get that. Okay. There is no one size fits all for this. There are people who will try to convince you that there is a one size fits all when it comes to building wealth, but there's not. Even when you look at people's definition of the one size fits all formula, you start to realize there's a whole lot of wiggle room in some of them. Okay. I'm just telling you. And so that being said, I have to, we have to understand and accept that there's no one size fits all formula. But the thing is, we also have to, um, and so so with understanding that there's no one size fits all formula, we have to understand that I'm not good at A right now, just because I haven't figured out my way of doing it. I haven't figured out my secret sauce, my magical way of accomplishing this thing. So typically when I'm working with my clients and we're sitting in coaching sessions and they're telling me, oh, I've tried this, I did this, I did that. And I give them new tips and new strategies and they try new things. And we might experiment at for, through a couple of coaching sessions before they find that thing that clicks. And it's like everything in their life just like snaps into place and they start killing these goals and killing these dreams, okay? So with that being said, if you're out here killing it, but you're doing something that's slightly different from another person that's killing it, it's okay. Because the way you do it doesn't have to be the way that they do it. So when you give yourself the self-imposed limitation of I'm not good at, you're telling yourself what the reality of what you're telling yourself is that I'm just not good at this thing with this self-prescribed formula, with this set methodology that was given to me. Now the key is to stop telling yourself that I'm not good at this overarching thing. Just say, I'm not good at it that way. So we're gonna try another way and see if we can do it. And so with money, that applies. With mine, the one I'm guilty about is marketing. Okay, child, let me tell you. I'm be real. I don't really like social media. I don't. Like, I'm that person. Okay, I don't like to post on social media. Okay, let me just be for real, for real honest. I get on social media to keep up with the lives of people that I care about. And I do that because I spend so much time, honestly, work between Sila and ministry and the children. Like I spend so much time working and taking care of what I'll say my immediate family that sometimes I don't have as much time as I would like to, to get to like, you know, extended family or to like friends, especially if they don't live in the area. And so for me, social media becomes a platform for me to be able to look and to reasonably keep up with what's going on in your life so that when I do get a chance to sit down with you, when I do get a chance to talk to you, it's not like we're trying to like recap, you know, six, seven months of events. Like, no, I've reasonably kept up. So I have a good idea what's going on with you. So I don't say nothing stupid. I don't say anything offensive. And you know, cause you know what I mean? Life, life happens. And sometimes when life happens, there are certain things that people can say that would be really offensive and really stupid. And I do have, I've been working on it. Okay. The Lord has been working on me, but I do have the habit of putting my foot in my mouth sometimes if I'm not paying attention. And so for me, social media is about keeping up with the people that I care about, but I just don't have the time to talk to as much as I would like to. That being said, I don't necessarily like posting about my life. And it's just because Although I'm, a, I've gotten a little better at it, but like I don't think in tweetable moments, I don't think in posted moments. Like even today, like if you look on my personal social media, I posted something today, but it wasn't even about me; it was about somebody else. I did this photo shoot with a phenomenal photographer who is in Dreamers Financial Sanctuary. By the way, her name is Siobhan Ragsdale. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and just get on her calendar because she, like, these photos are phenomenal. Mano, okay? The photos are phenomenal and I absolutely love the work that she did. Um, and my husband and I are looking at them. And so I just posted this thing because I'm like, everyone needs to know about her because she's phenomenal, she's amazing. And I want her to succeed in photography because that's just how good she is. It'd be one thing if she was like, she's just my homegirl and you know, her pictures are all right. But no, like they're legit phenomenal, okay? My husband was impressed. He was like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I got a photo shoot I need to do soon. I'm gonna need her to do mine. That's how good they are. And so I posted on social media, but it wasn't even about me, it was about her. And so that's my thing. Like I'm not a big poster of my own life. I don't, not a, like, I just, I don't know. I just don't like posting on social media. And so for that reason, because social media is such a huge part of marketing nowadays, especially with an online business like mine, 
you end up running into this problem where it's like, okay, I'm not good at marketing and this standard way of doing things. And so with that understanding, it can be really difficult for me sometimes to market. And so you'll catch me saying things like, I'm not good at marketing. Okay, no child, stop saying that. And so that's something that I have to realize. And so how do you undo that though? So if you've been telling yourself, I'm not good at this thing, and you've convinced yourself you're not good at this thing, when the reality is you're just not good at doing it this particular way, then what you have to do is you have to keep practicing and keep working keep experimenting, keep trying new things, new ways, new methodologies until you find what works for you. So when it comes to your money, for example, you have to keep trying until you figure out what is the best way for you to manage your money. When it comes to marketing, you and I have to keep trying and working until we figure out what is the best way for us to market our businesses. When it comes to, heck, I don't look, when it comes to hair, for example, like look, if you natural, you will, you will experiment all day, every day. You over here watching YouTube videos. You got like 30 sets of products under your sink and you're trying to figure out what works for you. I have finally figured out the products that work for my hair, my natural hair, not this thing. Cause look, I paid for it, but it ain't mine. Okay. The Lord be blessing. Um, <laughs> but We will go through all of the time and the energy and the effort to try to figure out what works best for our hair so that our hair can be beautiful and popping and just have all like all the curl pattern, just like on point. Okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, if you're not an African-American woman (laughs) with natural hair and you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's fine. Just Google, go on YouTube and look up like natural hair care journey, black women, and you'll see the struggle that we go through. Okay. The struggle is real, but we go through it and we walk through the struggle and we keep shifting and trying and changing and adjusting until we finally figure something out. We have to do that same thing for anything that we come up against that's hindering our ability to accomplish whatever big phenomenal goals that are out there that we feel called to accomplish. So that being said, I'm not good with money, so then find a new way to budget. Maybe budgeting this particular way didn't work for you. Okay, maybe you tried it with a spreadsheet and maybe you need to do an app. Maybe an app didn't work for you. Maybe you need to try a spreadsheet. Maybe that don't work and you need to try the envelope method. Maybe the envelope method don't work and you got to do like the, uh, like apply profit first basically to your house household, whatever. Find what works for you, okay? Some people, auto pay works great for them. And for other people, they don't do well with auto pay because they have trouble keeping remembering. So like, for example, when I'm over here, I gotta pay this, 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 and this. Well, I gotta remember that at the beginning of the month, my mortgage is gonna come out. So I gotta leave a certain amount of money to make sure my mortgage is covered. But if you're the type of person that you're not good at remembering those things, then either you gotta write it all down and kind of like have it next to you whenever you're making the decisions, Or you can just take everything off of auto pay, have kind of like a handwritten calendar, and then you just pay things as they come up due. It's whatever works for you. Different things work for different people, but you gotta keep trying new and different things to figure out what works for you. Me, same thing with marketing. I'm gonna keep trying different things. How does it work for me on social media where I don't have to like constantly be thinking about, okay, what can I post about about what I'm doing? Because yes, my life, I'll admit, my lifestyle is kind of cool. I do live a fun life. It is a entertaining and engaging life. I do like my life. And so I should share it, but it's just figuring out what is the best way to do it for me so that I can be open, and honest and, and authentic with my audience and my business. But at the same time that I don't have to spend all my time thinking about like, okay, how can I make this a postable moment? Cause that's just not how my brain works. It's just not. I've never been that, like, I've never just wanted the attention like that. Like, there's key people that I want to acknowledge Like there's key people that I just like, okay, do you think I did a good job here? And then I'm good. You know what I mean? (laughs) But I don't need everybody to see me. And so for that, social media becomes a tough arena for me, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep shifting and adjusting until I figure out what works for me. You have to do the same thing. So I don't care what it is you say you're not good at. It's okay. We're going to keep shifting and trying and changing and adjusting until we figure out what we're good at. Okay. So that's the first one. I'm not good at that limitation. Mm -mm, Let that go, boo. Another limitation is, and this is one that it's not like a look like a saying thing. It's just something that keep that always comes back to me. Um, so if you read my book, that tool called money, you know, that I talk about, um, in the do when we're, you got to dream it, you got to plan it, you got to do it. Right. And when we get to the do section, I talk about the fact that 
You have to learn the lessons from your mistakes, but you cannot give up. The truth of the matter is you're human and any plan that you come up with is not going to be perfect. Why is it not going to be perfect? Because you you don't know everything. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. You don't know what your life is going to look like in the future. You don't know what the life of your clients is going to look like in the future. You don't know what the economy is going to look like in the future. Heck, we don't even know who the president is going to be in the, like, who's going to be the president elect in the next 365 days. I don't know. Who knows? Okay. People got assumptions. We don't know. All right. We all, most of us thought we knew how 2016 was going to end, end, end the way we thought it was going to end. Some of us just said, you know what? This not looking good. We going to sleep, uh, <laughs> you know, and it is what it is. So we make assumptions, we have beliefs, we have thought processes, but ultimately we don't know how something is going to end or going to go or going to flow. And so your plan is not, is never going to be perfect. So do not ever think that your plan is perfect. Do not ever think that your plan is going to perfectly flow the way that you want it to, because there's always going to be something that comes up that you did not have the foresight, did not have the knowledge to know, to anticipate because life, okay, life, just life. Life is disrespectful sometimes, okay? So you can't predict it. So that being said, what you have to do is you have to be um, very intentional about thinking through, okay, how can I learn the, from this mistake and then push forward? Because I'm not going to give up. I refuse to give up. I gotta learn the lessons from the mistakes. I gotta learn the lessons from the oversights. And so the first question, and so just simply, the question you really wanna know is, okay, what happened? And what you're hearing in the background is probably my dog. It's okay. But what you have to ask yourself is what happened? What went wrong? Why is my dog in the backyard making noise in the middle of my podcast episode? Because you know what? I did not plan ahead. And what I should have done was I should have made sure that he had run himself out and he was all, you know, like just calm and sleepy. And he could have been in, in the, uh, in his, kennel bed taking a nap while I was in the podcast episode okay oversight on my part it happens but what went wrong so that's what went wrong and I know in the future when I'm going to do a podcast episode okay well maybe I'm just going to try and run him out take him on a long walk let him run around play some games with him tire him out so he'll take a nap in his bed while I do my podcast episode okay that's what we're going to try in the future and so that's what you do you learn the lessons from the mistakes and then you move forward and you try something different. So what is some, so as you're moving through your big goals, when something goes wrong, ask yourself what went wrong, ask yourself how you can make it better and then keep pushing, keep moving forward with it. But you're not going to give up. Okay. Give up ain't an option because the moment you give up, that means that you've allowed your limitations to win. And God is not interested in participating in your limitations. He doesn't want your limitations to win. Okay. He wants your faith in him. He wants your go get him. He wants your, um, all that he has put inside of you. That's the stuff he wants to win. Those are the things he wants to see manifest. He wants those things to come alive in your life. He does not want to see you stuck and trapped because you decided to allow your limitations self-imposed limitations, honestly, to hold you back. So if something goes wrong, that's fine because it's inevitable. Something's going to go wrong. Point blank, period. Spoiler alert. I guarantee you something's going to go wrong. There are not a lot of things in life I guarantee you. That's one thing I'm going to guarantee you. Something's going to go wrong, but it's okay because you're going to stop. You're going to ask yourself what went wrong. We're going to see if there's a way that we can make it better or fix it in the future. And then we're going to keep moving forward and pushing. We not giving up. Okay. Mm -mm. Not today, boo. Mm -mm. All right. So 2020, no give up. What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, so another thing, and I've kind of covered it already with the first limitation, but the other thing, the limitation, one limitation we often set for ourselves is we have to follow the exact formula that this person followed to accomplish what they accomplished. The problem is that nothing in our circumstances is ever going to look exactly like their circumstances. So following their methodology exactly nine times out of 10 is not going to get you exactly where they are because your circumstances are different. So for example, um, and I was listening to a podcast episode for, by another young lady and she was talking about how she thinks that in 2020 it's going to be a lot of getting back to the basics, resetting, because when it comes to like email marketing and social media, everyone's kind of teaching the same things and the same methodologies over and over again. And she said, the problem that we're having though, is that because everyone does it the same way and everyone knows it's the same way, you got to do something different because everyone knows it's just the tactic at this point. She's like, back in the day, 
um, like early on. So she's like, so she's talking about like, say for example, 2010, 2012. She's like, it was very different back then because not everyone was talking about this methodology. Not everyone was teaching this way. A lot of the people who were um, kind of teaching it were basically people who were like, well, here's what I'm doing. Here are the results I'm getting. So, okay, we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep experimenting. And then they came up with their formula. They started teaching their formula. And then the bunch of the people they were teaching started teaching the same formula. And now everyone knows is the exact same formula. So the way that we react to the formula is very different now than it was back in 2012, 2013, 2014. Plus on top of that, algorithms have changed in Instagram and in Facebook and Twitter. Things have changed. And so nothing is working exactly the same way as it did before. So certain strategies that were popping in 2012, 2013, 2014 that got phenomenal resu results might not get you phenomenal results right now because these circumstances are not the same. They're not. And let's just ignore the fact that you have different personalities. Your businesses are not exactly the same. Your way of dealing with your clients is not exactly the same. Your website isn't even exactly the same. Like nothing is the exact same. So we cannot follow the exact same formula and expect to get the exact same results. So going back to the first one of I'm not good at, it's not that you're not good at it. You just got to find a new way of doing it. Now, here's the thing you also have to remember. I mentioned Microsoft. I mentioned Apple. I mentioned Warren Buffett. The way that they did things to grow what they grew, Berkshire's Hathaway, there it is. Berkshire's Hathaway is what Warren Buffett created. But the way that these things, these companies became these massive entities that they are is because they were doing something different. It wasn't because they did this formula that everyone else was doing. They did something different and they pushed through and they made it through. And yeah, they made... they. You can probably find some really dumb investments on their side, but you can also find some really wise investments on their side. And so there's two main things, like when I look at, um, three main things actually, when I look at the way that people tended to invest um, their time, their energy, and their money to be able to grow these massive enterprises, is yes, you gotta do something new, you gotta do something different, but there's some wisdom that you gotta apply behind it. For example, one of the things that these guys, you'll often hear any of these guys mention is that you shouldn't invest in anything that you don't understand. If you don't know what's going on, it's really difficult for you to make a deal on it. Don't write your name on a contract for, and you don't even understand what's happening. Like that's just insane. So like for me, I wouldn't mind writing my name on like a construction contract where, where there's some construction going on and and things like that that wouldn't bother me very much but that's only because I've audited construction contracts and construction projects so I have a little bit of comfort behind it I have a little bit of understanding of it and I know what are some of the things I need to research I need to learn about to better round out my education so that I can do these things but too many of us People give us, oh, you can get rich real fast doing this thing. We take like a one hour course. We think we're an expert. We try to jump out and do the thing. And then we fall flat on our face. Well, the reason why is because we didn't truly understand it. We might've had a general idea. We might've had a general concept. We might've had a general understanding of it, but we did not truly get it, understand it and know how it worked. And because of that, we ended up making unwise decisions. So do not invest in things you don't understand. And not even things you just have a, I get the gist of it. No, you have to understand how it works before you invest in it. Two, the other thing that you want to do is you want to do the best that you can to protect your family. And I just realized I'm about to combine two and three. So we're back to two things. Um, you have to protect your family. And the primary way that you'll hear these people tell you to protect your family is that do everything that you can to design your contract, your arrangement, your project, whatever, in a way that protects as much as possible your principal investment. If you're able to pretty much guarantee that you're at least going to get the principal you invested back into the situation, at that point, you've almost eliminated, you pretty basically eliminated your risk. And if you can eliminate that risk and know that you're at least going to get your principal investment back, now you're in a safe place and you're in a place where you can afford to make this investment because you're not going into it knowing that you're going to lose your money. Now, if you cannot quite figure out how to do that, then what, then what you would have to do is just make sure that whatever you invest 
is what you can afford to lose. Now, ideally you wanna do the research and you wanna be like super duper confident that you're not gonna lose the money, but do not invest more than you can afford to lose if you can't structure the deal in a way that you protect your principal investment. So if I'm gonna start this, I don't know, I'm gonna start this franchise. If there's no guarantee that I'm at least, if I gotta invest $50,000 in this franchise, if there's no guarantee that I'm at least gonna get $50,000 back, I ain't doing it. But if, for example, I happen to have $50,000 just lying around somewhere and I could, you know, I could lose the $50,000 and not even bat an eye like a Mark Cuban can, even though he doesn't. No, pay attention to Shark Tank, okay? They be out there talking about, we gonna give you $50,000, but we need all this money's back, okay? These are billionaires, okay? They can give you $50,000 and not bat an eyelash, but they bat eyelashes on $50,000, okay? Note that. But I'm just saying, you gotta be at a place where you're, you can lose that money and not bad eyelash if you can't structure the deal so you get your money back. Simple, really simple, okay? Um, so yeah, so understand that you don't have to do it exactly how someone else did it to be able to succeed. You're going to have to try new things. You're going to have to try different things. It's just making sure that you do what you can to, um, one, make sure that you fully understand what it is you're about to get into when you do this different thing, however it is, and make sure that if you have to invest some money in this different thing, that you're pretty sure you're going to get your money back. Or if you're not going to get your money back, make sure that it's enough money that if you did lose it, you're going to be okay. Okay. So that's the third thing. Um, that's the third self-imposed limitation that we have to address. Okay. Um, and then the, the fourth one, and this is not, I can't even call this a self-imposed limitation. It's really just kind of a thought process that um, it's a cliche. Let's be real about it. It's a cliche, but it's true. Um, and it's something that we have to do better about applying to our lives. So let's just say the first three are self-imposed limitations. The first one that I'm not good at foolishness. Okay, just let that go. Okay, you're just not good at doing it this prescribed way. We just gonna keep trying and finding different ways until we find our own unique way of doing the thing until we're good at it. Okay. Two, um, giving up instead of just learning the lessons and then pushing forward. Okay. That's the first, another self-imposed limitation. And then the third one is the belief that we have to do things exactly the way they did it to succeed. When the truth is the people who stand out, the people who succeed big, they always do something different, but they're just smart about how they invest their time, their energy and their money. Okay. And so then this last thing that I want to bring up before I hop off this podcast episode is I want to, I want to leave you with this cliche, shoot for the stars. And even if you miss, you'll, you still might hit the moon. And the reason why I think that's so important is because we, what we'll do is we'll set the moon as the goal. But then if something doesn't go right, because again, I've told you something, something's guaranteed to go wrong. Sometimes that thing that goes wrong will just be an annoyance that gets in the way, but sometimes it will keep us from hitting this goal and you'll hit somewhere lower on the rung. But I don't want to just hit the stratosphere. I want to go all the way to the moon. I want to go beyond the moon if I can. Why should I tell myself that I can only make it to the moon when I already know that I serve a God who can do exceedingly, you know, exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. So if I can think to the stars, he can do above and beyond the stars. But if, for example, I mess something up along the way, there's a good chance that even on my way to the stars, even if I stall out, I'll probably stall out by the moon. I'll stall out in the stratosphere. I will stall out somewhere that is significantly higher than where I already am. So that's something that we just have to internalize, live by, accept it, okay? Shoot for the stars and you'll, and even if you miss, you'll probably hit the moon. It's a good one. I like it. I like it. I'm rolling with it. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going beyond the limits. Okay. Because I'm not even shooting for the stars anymore. Like I'm going outside this whole galaxy. I'm going some, like whatever. I'm going into deep space, child. I'm going into deep space. So that's what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for deep space. Okay. I'm trying to be like enterprise going where no man has gone before. Okay. That's how my spirit is right now. That's how I am for this year. This year, this this is how I'm feeling, okay? <clears throat> and I have to tell you guys, like in a moment of transparency, I have to be honest. There was a point last year when I was just like, 
I'm over this. I'm done with this. I'm giving up. I'm not doing it. And I realized that a lot of it was just me walking in self-imposed limitations. That's all I was doing. Um, there was a lot of spiritual attacks attached to it. Let me tell you, you know, when you start going out here preaching and the enemy don't like you preaching, then he starts trying to attack you. But it wasn't, but he wasn't attacking me with external things. He was attacking me with my own self-imposed limitations. And so I got to think beyond my limit. I have to think beyond every limit that I've ever given myself. And I have to trust in the God that I serve and all of the amazing gifts that he has put inside of me to go above and beyond and out and go to deep space where no man has gone before. So that is where my spirit is in 2020. That is where I want your spirit to be in 2020. So we gonna ride this ride together. Okay, so there you go. You have it. You have your first episode of the Dreamers Financial Playbook Podcast for 2020, episode number 85. We're coming up on 100 pretty soon. Okay, I gotta figure out what we gonna do. I'm gonna figure it out, I promise you. But with that, I want you, if you have a goal that you have set, I want you to share it with me, okay? Let me know how you're shooting for, for deep space. Let me know. Where are you going? What are you striving for? What are you pushing for? Okay, because if if there's a way that I can help you, a way that I can serve you, I totally want to do it. Like, I'm going to hit you back with my comments, with my thoughts, with my opinions. Like, girl, let's go. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. Hey, don't forget to try this out because I bet you this will help you out. Like, that. that's where my spirit is. So head over to Dreamers Financial Playbook. Um, Yes, dreamersfinancialplaybook.com. Shoot me your message. Let me know what you got going on. What's in your spirit? What are you feeling? How are you going beyond the limits? And I promise I'm going to hit you back. So thanks. I love you guys. Ah, 2020. We're doing it big, ladies. We're doing it big. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Dreamers Financial Playbook. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you always know what's happening next. Oh yeah, and don't forget to give us a rating and review on iTunes. That would definitely make us smile. One last thing, if you want even more of the playbook, go on the website at dreamersfinancialplaybook.com. This is where you can check out the show notes, grab some freebies, and get an inside look into the life of myself and my clues claim because we're always up to something. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.